All right, thanks for coming back here to my YouTube channel. Just wanted to give you some 49er updates for the Wednesday heading into week two. 49ers, of course, play the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday. Uh, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave a comment, a like, all of that good stuff. Okay, first off, we're going to start off with Christian McCaffrey and kind of the mindset that it takes to be a great athlete. Uh, last week, he made, I guess, some headlines with him saying that in his mind there was no doubt he was going to play in the game Monday night. Of course, at that point, he was limited in practices with the calf strain and the Achilles tendonitis. So it did come as a surprise, I think, to a lot of people, myself included, uh, that he was inactive for that season opening game. But he shed a little bit of light in just how he gets ready to prepare, uh, get prepared to play a game. He talked about this on Wednesday. He said that the moment you go into a week thinking that maybe you'll play, maybe you won't play, you're as good as toast. You're, you're not going to play in that game if you're of that mindset just kind of going into it 50-50. So he said that he always believes he's going to play because that just gets him in the right frame of mind. And then as the week of practice goes on, Wednesday practice, Thursday practice, then as you get closer to the game, that decision is made day of game. And so as always, uh, inactives have to be delivered to the league 90 minutes before kickoff. We'll see where Christian McCaffrey is this week. My thought would be he'll probably be listed as questionable again on Friday when the injury reports have to come out. So I asked Kyle Shanahan about this, the fact that McCaffrey is limited in practice. He's not a no participant in practice, he's limited. So I asked if that was seen as something positive that he wasn't being shut down, uh, that he's still able to practice and all of that. And he said, absolutely. You know, if, if it were really serious and the team was super concerned about it, he wouldn't be out there practicing. As far as the artificial turf at US Bank Stadium in Minnesota, uh, McCaffrey says that has no impact on his availability for this game. He says if he's good to go, he's good to go. It doesn't matter whether you're playing on grass or artificial surface, he's good to go. So we'll see how this turns out. I think probably the, the thought is that, um, it, I, I wouldn't say a long shot, but uh, certainly a 50-50, let's just say 50-50, uh, that he's available for this game. I, I guess it's easy to say that he probably won't play, and, uh, and that very well may be the way it, it turns out. Um, a little bit disappointed or surprised that Jordan Mason was not NFC Offensive Player of the Week. He certainly, uh, certainly deserved that coming off his 147-yard performance, 28 carries against the Jets. But uh, Jordan Mason would obviously step into that role. Um, maybe they get some carries if McCaffrey doesn't go. Maybe they get some carries for the rookie Isaac Garindo. Uh, Patrick Taylor Jr. is the other running back. And then, of course, the other, other running back is Debo Samuel. Eight carries for him, 23 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, I want to touch also on Brandon Ayuk. So Ayuk had two catches, 28 yards. I asked him about how tough he is on himself and how he would evaluate that first game back. And he said that he was so discouraged coming out of that game and was kind of scared of what he would see on film that he didn't rewatch the game Monday night. He didn't watch it Tuesday. It wasn't until Wednesday morning that he decided to rewatch that game. And he said that it wasn't quite as bad as he thought it was going to be. He did kind of bemoan the fact that he could not make that catch in the end zone, uh, having both hands on it. Yes, it was a difficult catch as he was starting his dive, but it seemed like, you know, to me, the, the most difficult part of that catch is securing it and then holding on to it once you go to the ground. And for him, it already went through his hands before he even hit the ground. So uh, he was upset about that. He said that was just part of it though. Um, but then um, I also asked what's the next step in trying to get back in the midseason form. And he just said repetition, repping it on Wednesday, repping it on Thursday, and then going into the game and just getting better every day and getting more and more comfortable getting back into the lineup. So Wednesday is going to be a half-speed practice for the 49ers. Thursday, I believe they'll have the pads on, and it'll be more up-tempo as they try to win their first game in Minnesota since 1992. 
wow, it's been a long time. Seven consecutive losses for the 49ers in Minnesota. So that's a streak they're looking to break. Um, other 49ers injury stuff, all of the guys or the two guys who were out last week remain out of practice this week. Don't expect them to play on Sunday against the Vikings. That's Yitor Grossmatos and D. Winners, uh, the backup linebacker. Um, as far as the limited guys, um, Talano Hufanga also limited in practice on Wednesday, as well as McCaffrey. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't think that Hufanga will be back, but there is a chance that he will be back. I think the Frenners feel good about the job that George Odom did filling in at safety in place of Hufanga. So those guys are iffy. Um, two other guys were limited in practice. That was Aaron Banks with a finger and his calf contusion, as well as Juwan Jennings with an ankle injury. I'd say that those two guys are on pace to play in this game. So that's a, a quick recap on where the 49ers are heading into this. Uh, some other notes, um, Brock Purdy won his bet against George Kittle, the Iowa State-Iowa game last year. It was Kittle who won the bet, so Purdy had to come in wearing the big Iowa Hawkeye mascot head uh, to his press conference. And then uh, today on Wednesday, in front of his locker, George Kittle wore Brock Purdy's game helmet from his time at Iowa State. So um, Fred Warner also spoke he talked about uh, the challenge of going up against Aaron Jones, the former Packers running back. Foreigners know him very well from that time, from his time with the Packers. Uh, he is the Vikings lead back. And of course, the Vikings quarterback is no longer Kirk Cousins, it's Sam Darnold. And uh, one of the things that, that Warner talked about was just the, the arm talent that the 49ers saw on a daily basis last year as Darnold worked against the 49ers or Darnold was on the scout team offense working against the 49ers first team uh, defense. So the 49ers know that, that Darnold can make all the throws. Um, Darnold has talked a lot in Minnesota since going to that team about just what he learned during his one season with the 49ers, uh, the preparation. And it's kind of interesting that a guy who had been in the league for several years before this comes in and he was you know, a top three draft pick um, but he talked about coming to the 49ers and learning a lot from the 262nd pick in the 2022 draft, Brock Purdy, as far as just the preparation and all the stuff that it takes behind the scenes mentally to get prepared to play football. And Darnold had a very good game for the Vikings uh, in week one against the New York Giants, but the task gets a lot more difficult for him as he goes up against the 49ers. So it'll be a matchup of one and one or one and O teams, two teams that won impressively in week one and uh, should be a good one as the 49ers look to uh, go into a very noisy stadium. And if they do what they did on Monday against the Jets, they'll be certainly looking to quiet down that crowd in Minnesota. So once again, thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel and we'll be back with you. Uh, fairly shortly with another update.